Hey, how you doing today? It's Brad Buckner with SharpensBest.com. Uh, just out here doing a little bit of fun stuff, and I got something in my hand here. And uh, actually, I have a few things in my hand here, so what could be in my hand? Well, it might be, where do you get the world's smallest battle axe? Two-sided, okay? And it's uh, uh, actually like a... Uh, uh, rendezvous old like uh, 17, 15, 16, 1700s and it's got a, a chain you know on it so you can put it on your neck it's got like a charm you can put it on your bracelet or something like that and uh, so anyway we have a few of them here <coughs> okay there's actually five total and uh, so let's uh, I don't know let's play with one of them um, eh, I'm always sharpening stuff so let's see uh, what we got here, no, it's not sharp, uh, and neither is the other side. All right, and so let's, uh, hopefully there's one thicker than, or one thinner. Yeah, they're about the same. They made the mold the same. I have no idea. Uh, this is hard to hang on to and kind of hard to, uh, it's, it's peeling the metal off pretty good. That's good, but it's really hard to hang on to. Just like this, and I don't use the V notch to speak of ever, except for when I'm making a knife out of something, trying to reshape it. You know, completely reshape the cutting edge. And now I kind of got a rhythm going here. We're slicing off some metal. Actually, we're slicing quite a bit. Uh, I don't know, pot metal of some sort. Uh, it's got a little weight to it. It's not very heavy. It's it, you know, kind of heavy. For a small little trinket axe, um, it's definitely not aluminum, and uh, pot metal might be cheaper than aluminum, so I think they wouldn't make it out of aluminum. It'd be easier to make out of aluminum. All right, so let's see. That's quite a bit of metal right there, and it's it's really throwing a, a chunk of metal every pass. So let's kind of. Oh man, I can still see the cutting edge like crazy. So, let's uh, see if I can work on it. Uh, last weekend when I was down in... Um, hey buddy, how you doing, huh? Woo! Uh, last weekend when I was down in Rock Springs, Wyoming, a gal come over to me and she had a tubing cutter. So for any of you guys that have done a little plumbing and stuff out there, a tubing cutter, and it's a small tubing cutter, uh, it's, it's only about probably two inches square and the tubing cutter the little wheel is only probably maybe three quarters of an inch in diameter so she took that wheel out and i sharpened the wheel and i was actually slicing the paper on the table you know put the paper down and then just run it down there like that and so i was actually slicing the paper on the table she went and used it on tubing for her artwork uh, arts and crafts and things that she's doing and uh, was very pleasantly surprised you can tell by the big smile she had on her face so that was pretty cool. Saved your twelve dollars because you can't just go buy the wheel. I guess you have to buy the whole attach, the whole uh, tubing cutter. So anyway, it was really cool that I was able to sharpen it. She was happy, and it was a really cool deal. Uh, I, I wish it would have been uh, filmed for a demo. Uh, would have made a good demo. All right, and uh, metal is flying off of this thing. I have to keep it. I have to keep it down around. Uh, 10 12 degrees because it wouldn't do me any good to sharpen it if I was up around 20 or 25 degrees So let's flip it over and see uh, work on this side now and uh, I just hold my hand on my leg so it moves like a machine or just Carving away at it. <clears throat> By the way, this is actually the uh, four-in-one tool. It's the miniature version of the sharpen spark It does have a bottle opener right there it's got a shaper sharpener for kitchen knives, sharpener for all knives, and then it's got this kind of new, I don't know if it's, yeah, it's been used, okay. Um, so there's your sparks, a little faster. All right, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I cheat, of course, and I use hand sanitizer. And um, I'll tell you about a different way that I made my uh, fire up in the mountains the other day. Um, and that was pretty cool. It worked really good with no accelerant except a little bit of toilet paper and the toilet paper catches a spark pretty easy it burns pretty easy and it burns pretty good and it got the little uh grass and leaves and pine needles on fire that i had made kind of a little fire bed out of so that was pretty cool all right let we're getting down to where maybe hey combo how's you doing buddy oh yeah hmm? 
Yeah. That's Cabo. He wanted to come outside with us. Now he's bored. He just like kids. Okay. Now we just touch it a little bit on each side. There goes the sticks. <laughs> he's dragging them out of the fire pit. Okay. He's just like a little kid that's bored. Actually, that that actually bites pretty good. Uh, you can actually see where it's roughing my thumbnail all up. Actually, <laughs> that's sharper. <coughs> that's sharper than I thought it was going to be. Reader's Digest. I've never used that paper, but who knows? Might be a good deal. Oh my. Swimsuit edition. It's probably a good deal. <laughs> um, let's see if I can at least cut. Okay, I can go along and cut the paper like that, like kind of like a knife. Uh, not slicing it, but all right, that's there you go. It is cutting along. I'm going to sharpen it just a little bit more. Yeah, you know what? Let's uh, let's switch over to a knife here, and uh, it's the uh, Neo Chrome. Uh, it's funny. I almost want to say Neodymium. That's a, a rare earth magnet. Uh, that's actually a pretty nice knife. Got a little bit of weight to it. It's got what I call the center frame lock or just frame lock on it. Uh, you can open it, you know, like that. Uh, it's a one-sided sharpen. Um, you know, these little axes like this, I don't know, maybe we'll put them on the uh, website for $4.95. Uh, you know, $4.95 in shipping. So let's see what we got here for sharp. Whoa, that's actually sharper than I thought it was going to be. Just like that. Okay, that's pretty smooth. It's reasonably quiet. Let's do just a little touch up. This is actually becoming uh, one of my favorites and it's the biggest one. It's called uh, Emergency, uh, I think it's called Emergency, uh, Survival Sharpen Fire. And um, you want this stick over there? All right, it's got the regular sharpener here, the open face, it's got the V notch, okay. This one is pretty cool because it's got a, a cav storage cavity. Oh, that's got something in it. Uh, and it, actually, it's uh, uh, it's steel wool, okay, because they claim you can make a fire with steel wool. <laughs> I've seen it done with batteries. I would not. I mean, if you're if you got all this time and all this stuff and all these things you can put together, maybe you use a nine volt battery in this. I prefer other methods. But that's pretty cool. Um, I don't even know. I've never done this before ever. I'm going to try it, and I'm just going to spark into it and see what happens. Um, <coughs> so let's see uh, what ha I, have, I have no idea. I've never done this before. I, oops, and the wind is raising cane with us again. So we'll put that there like that. Oops, don't want to do that. That's putting it back together like this. Take my sharpened fire. Uh, it is burning and it might start grass on fire. Uh, now she's out. Um, blow water. Uh, I can't imagine steel wool making a flame. Um, We'll just do it one more time. I, right now, I'm just kind of playing, uh, just to see, I guess, will it actually do something valuable? Um. Uh, that would actually get some grass on fire. I, I'm a little bit amazed that it, and it's, it's hot. Uh, it's actually burning down in there. You won't see any flames, but it is burning. Ta da! Ha ha ha! I just got fooled. Uh, egg on my face? Yeah. 
Um, I didn't think that would work. I really didn't. The cameraman says blow on it, so I actually had a little bit of air, and by gosh, down the inside, it got burning pretty good. And then you wrap it up in a piece of paper, toilet paper, or something like that. Maybe it's uh, some of this uh, cheat grass uh, leaves, some pine cone uh, material, pine cones, or uh, pine needles, things like that. That would be cool. So I just got a surprise, and it was a pleasant one. That actually kind of worked. So, I mean, it, there goes the whole pile. <laughs> How funny. You goofy dog. See, one piece of wood isn't enough. Two pieces of wood, not enough. Three, four pieces of wood, not enough. Wood out of the fire pit, not quite enough. He's got to have a lot of wood to chew on. Okay, well, anyway, let's uh, just check this out. That's the fire starter. It's got a whistle in it. Okay. So, hey, I'm over here. I need help. You know, thing. So to sharpen with it, it would be just like this. I actually like this one because of the size of it. We made a big one so if you got gloves on, you can handle the sharpener with gloves on. We made it green so it's easy to find when you're out somewhere and you drop it at night. I shined a light on this. It doesn't glow, but I'll tell you what, it's very bright. When you shine a light on that green, you actually kind of go, whoa, that's hard on the eyes. All right, so it would be just like this. I'll actually roll it in my fingers. I go out and I come back like that. I go out to the tip of the blade, come back. Same thing here. Now I, I set it down a little tiny bit more when I head towards the, the point of the blade. And I'm watching the blade right now. And I watch the shine on the blade. And I can match that uh, bevel perfectly and uh, by the shine. So just like this, just like that, like this, like that. Touch it kind of light. Don't press too hard. Let it work. Don't make it work. Flip the knife every pass. Polish the wire edge off the blade, and you really got to touch that thing light. So let's see. Ooh, that bites. So this is called the uh, Survival Sharpen Fire. So survival, whistle. It's got the storage cavity for uh, fish hooks, fish line, matches, toothpicks, maybe medication. We are in Colorado. You know. Okay. And it's pretty cool. It's kind of big. It's easy to find. Probably harder to lose. Easier to use if you got gloves on. Survival sharpened fire. So let's see now what we got since I uh, burned up my other piece of paper. You know, actually, Reader's Digest makes pretty nice paper for slicing. Um, so that's pretty cool. Okay, that's that's actually pretty darn sharp. Uh, clear out to the tip. It, it was pretty sharp to start with, but it is sharper now. It's quieter. You can really hear. Uh, and man, I'll tell you that uh, that bites. And I'm not going to scrape it too hard because it's it's taking the fingernail right off. So that's how you sharpen with it, just like this. You got a 90 degree corner. You got the blade. You match the bevel, approximately 11 degrees, 10, 11, 12, anywhere in there. Tip the knife a little bit. Start brushing. Do it again on this side. Oops. I don't hang on to this very tight. You can see when I drop it. Just like that. Just like this. Uh, the other day I, I was looking on my website and a guy says, who are you trying to fool, fraud? You can't sharpen a knife with that. It's just for honing and polishing. Well, <laughs> he has not looked at my videos because I sharpen stuff all the time that had no edge on it. Uh, from dull to sharp, I make knives out of uh, hacksaw blades. So how are you gonna fake uh, sharpening if you do a hacksaw blade okay the back of the hacksaw blade is a 90 degree flat 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 okay so come on guy if you watch this one too uh, you might think you're funny you might think you're cute you might think that you're smart you might think oh I'll make a, a dumbass comment and everybody's gonna love me well you know what a dumbass is a dumbass and that's all there is to it and it doesn't make any difference what you do but a dumbass is just gonna be a dumbass all right, so anyway, check out the sharpeners. Thank for watching anyway. This is Brad Buckner. This is the newest member of the family. Uh, oh, what do we got here? Well, we got one of these $100 bills. I love these things. The, the quality that goes into the printing of these, they're uh, uh, a gold foil wrapped around something tough, and I've tried to tear them in two, and that didn't work very well. And uh, it almost pains me to take a, a sharp knife for this thing. Try tearing that one first then. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, you can go right to the middle. It's, it's not very thick. I'm going to go right to the middle. I'm going to hang on to it like that. I'm going to take my thumbnails, put them close together so it should act like a shear, like where, where I tear it, okay? So we get a hold of it here, get a hold of it here, squeeze up, get a hold of it tight, and twist. And 
Mm-hmm. Okay, it wrinkled it, but it didn't even... I'm going to straighten it out with my thumbnail. It didn't even make the tiniest little tear in it. I don't know what that stuff is made out of, but I'm telling you, these gold foil bills are made to last. Uh, a tremendous amount of money and time went into the, the uh, plates and or the molds or whatever it was that made this thing. The detail is just unbelievable. Uh, it does say in God we trust. It is $100. It says $100 on the back. It says Independence Hall on it. Um, on the front, uh, we have Franklin. We have uh, Federal Reserve Note 100. It's got serial numbers on it. It's got the G. It's got two, 25G, 1976 series. It's got the, the letters with the numbers in the corners. I mean, this thing really looks real. Obviously, it's not a $100 bill, and anybody can see it's not a $100 bill. Okay. Can you break 100 for us? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, as long as they ain't like this. So let's see what, how they cut, all right? They ought to cut, I think, kind of good because they're, they're, they're tough, okay? Actually, that cuts pretty good, and I don't think the camera would ever see it, but I can see a black plastic liner uh, <clears throat> that this foil is, is uh, molded around, pressed onto. Yeah, let's do it one more time. And I think these are like... I don't know, a dollar or 75 cents, you buy enough of them. Uh, so we're actually cutting up 75 cents. Um, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna sign this on the back with this, uh, with this knife and let's sell this spoiled dollar that I just kind of mutilated and I'm gonna sign it. <clears throat> uh, $9.95. You can buy this one right here with my signature on the back and let's do it and today is 3 14 18 a lot of things I sign, I put a smiley face on, so I did that too. So, <clears throat> Brad Buckner, $100 foil, gold foil bill. It's been cut off. It's been tried to tear to there. And uh, so there it is. Brad Buckner, sharpensbest.com, the foil 100. How do they get one free? Well, how do you get one free? If you'll buy $100 worth of product, we'll give you one free. Does that work for you? And what if they tear one online, they get two back? Uh, yeah, if you can take your hands and literally, without notching it, without doing something to it, uh, you show us it's in really good shape just like this is, that it isn't all messed up. If you can tear on online uh, video and literally tear it in two, we'll send you two more. This is Brad, oh, but you got to have to contact us to let us know. This is Brad Buckner, sharpensbest.com. You take care and stay sharp out there.